Hello. Uh, good morning. Good evening. Um, welcome to our panel discussion. We're all very pleased to have you here. To the, to the topic of today's panel is uh, women on boards and performance. So some countries have a voluntary business-led approach to boardroom diversity that has worked. This has demanded careful thinking and planning using a plurality of thought experience and backgrounds. How to balance a voluntary approach against a quota regulation? Will the knowledge that women help create better performing firms persuade boards globally? What are the critical resistances? So with me today, I have a wonderful panel, wonderful group of women, and I'm going to get these women to introduce themselves and their passion. So my name is Lisa Senhauser. I'm based in Zurich, Switzerland, and we've got women here today from all over the world, from lots of different backgrounds to join us. Now, I've spoken briefly with all of you and you're all extremely driven, ambitious at the top of your game. You are passionate about equality and fairness, as well as performance and driving change. You're all extremely successful in your fields, walking the walk, as it were. You have different cultural backgrounds and varying family situations. I invite you to talk about yourself and for a few minutes each, so we can get a feel for who we are hearing from on the panel today. Perhaps our audience can find a role model or two among you that they can relate to. So I'm going to, first of all, go to, I think, Portugal and to Luisa. I think you're in Portugal today. Luisa Delgado, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you very much. It's such a pleasure to be uh, on this panel and participate in this discussion. Very briefly on myself, I'm Swiss born, uh, became eventually also Portuguese through marriage, uh, live in Switzerland, in the Engadin, and uh, often also in Lisbon and London. Um, my connection with diversity actually started in Procter & Gamble, uh, believe it or not, back in 1992 when we started in P&G to think about gender diversity and how it was important to have women in the business teams and what women would bring to the party. So it has been a long association as I grew through P&G, both in HR as a local CEO in Nordic, uh, in SAP and Safilo, global eyewear company, as the CEO for many years. And interestingly, uh, today, as an investor, entrepreneur, chair and board director on different types of companies, from private equity to listed companies to privately held, I have the pleasure and honor to be involved with uh, gender diversity as a business imperative in very leading companies like IKEA, but also in other industries and sectors like banking, where clearly gender diversity is still, I wouldn't say a newer topic, but perhaps a more challenging topic. Um, I deeply have come to the conviction that uh, what will make the difference for gender diversity and performance link is today the context of ESG. Uh, that is the context that frames a broader than mere financial immediate um, type of focus um, and performance. And I think um, the formalization of ESG into financial standard reporting will make the difference. Um, believe it or not, it will be accounting that will help the course, I think, to um, form itself and to systemize itself. And uh, the other thing I've also, I want to mention before we move on, I think also that while gender diversity has a lot of technical elements, perhaps at the end of the day, my experience over these 35 years has been that people who know and intuitively get what the right thing is to do in business get gender diversity without a new IFRS. Thank you very much, Louisa. That's a great start. Um, I'd also like to uh, head to San Francisco, where I believe it's the middle of the night, um, <laughs> to hear from Anita. Anita, would you introduce yourself and, and, and share your thoughts? Um, yeah. Hi, my name is Anita Matwani. I um, work in San Francisco with, uh, so I started my career on Wall Street many years ago. That was Career Run.0. I now am working with um, founders and um, in, in mostly in early stage companies and startups um, all across the board, clean tech, blockchain, technology, et cetera. 
And um, where I sit on a number of advisory boards, not so many board boards, not actual boards, but advisory boards, um, you know, in my group of friends and, and colleagues, there are a number of women now joining boards here in California. As you might know, we have a mandate, um, which I think has been pretty um life changing for um for the way the way boards look now here in, in, especially here in California and I think hopefully that will spread across the country and elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I can see that uh, Nina has joined us. Thank you. And um uh, first of all before I go to Nina, I'll go to Ayumi. Now, uh I think you're in France today, Ayumi. Yes, I'm in France and if you saw outside I live in this farm in the middle of nowhere about an hour and a half away from Paris and by train and the Wi-Fi is particularly good today so I'm we are we lucky we're very lucky ladies this morning because I could have been in and out you know while the goats are outside but um <clears throat> I am I was born in Brazil I'm half Brazilian and half Japanese and I grew up in South Africa during apartheid um which was quite a, a challenging thing because it, that was where uh, I was first I first faced discrimination not only of color but of gender and that's where I think you know my um this this passion for equality this drive comes from from my early childhood um and today of I I live in France so once again um in Brittany and I have founded um a digital company about 10 years ago called Social Brain it's a digital agency um and 3 years ago I founded um a non-profit called Women in Tech um i had no partners no money nothing but i had this dream and this and this vision that you know we need equality we need more women in technology because what i always knew is that we weren't represented in technology that there were lots less women you know in, in tech in the stem industry but what i didn't know is that the gap was getting wider and wider ever since the 80s and that for me was a shock um that made me um made me crazy made me upset made me angry and I wanted to transform this anger into something positive to make change. So today, 3 years later, we have this global movement. We have 22 chapters and we have about 60,000 um, members around the world working for this change in education, in entrepreneurship, social inclusion and in innovation. Um and I very recently um opened a, a social enterprise called Her Digital Academy to further help women by educating them skilling them upskilling them and trying to um yeah make them ready for the future of work anywhere in the world fantastic thank you for your passion on the topic ayumi um and now manuela could you introduce yourself please yes hi lisa everybody um yeah with with pleasure So it's um it's a great panel first of all I'm very happy to to be here and um to to be speaking about such topics with an an amazing uh, group of women with very different backgrounds as you said. So very briefly about me I'm an advisor these days on social trends economic impact and culture um I'm an expert in marketing communication public affairs I've had a career in finance which is where I uh, realized how diversity could be important and uh, a game changer and of course it became one of my passions together with responsible leadership so in the past 20 years I've lived in uh, uh, Milan London and Zurich I'm originally from Milan my husband is German so we have a multilingual family and we live in Zurich currently with our three young children I've had a uh, non-linear career uh, by choice and these days this has become a little bit the new normal and today I help organizations to build trust as social capital which also means uh working on uh your diversity and your gender equality and challenges such as gender pay gap and gender pension gap which also because of the pandemic are widening increasingly and that is a problem so um i think um as i said earlier banking or and somebody uh, also mentioned banking is a very special industry i had no idea about how important gender equality was until i actually started working in banking in london first but even even uh, Uh, more so in Zurich years later and once i became a mom actually things um um became even more uh, important and and clear of how much actually this industry but other industries such as tech and in general um as you go up through the ranks we need to bring gender equality and gender parity there is a problem with barriers there is a problem with the way we groom leaders and 
leadership actually these days is not meritocratic at all. And this is a problem because we don't have large pools of talented women often who um, are available for certain roles. There are uh, many, there is so much talent out there. We're just not able to bring it up and we're just not able to um, to form it in a way um, that, that, that it's significant later on. So um, I've become a, uh, or asked to become often a role model and I think I I, um, I always struggle with finding right role models in my life uh, for mm -hmm. one reason or the other. We never um, were able to uh, to find and identify. And I think I, 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 maybe I speak for many of us, but strong role models that that would fit the picture. And so I think we need more diverse role models. My advice these days for younger women who start, but also for women, and that could be us every day who struggle with work uh, from lack of recognition to imposter syndrome is to choose very carefully also the people we surround ourselves with. And uh, there always needs to be a balance of give and take uh, and of respect, uh, which um, is often is often uh, difficult to find. And, and so the main advice is to find your voice, to use it respectfully but firmly and whether it's your boss uh, circle stakeholders there are lines that should never be crossed but also balances to keep at all times and actually in my experiences will earn your respect very nice Manuela thank you and we're hearing a lot a lot of interesting terms role models respect trust and I want to go now to our final panelist Nina thank you for joining Nina where are thank you, you calling in from today uh, sorry? Where are you calling in from today? Uh, I'm in my home country in North Macedonia. Very good. So Nina, tell uh, us about yourself, three or four minutes, about your passion, what, what, uh, what drives you and why you're here on the panel today. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It was, it's a pleasure to be on, uh, on this very important panel. Uh, I'm sorry for being a few minutes late. I will try to let's see, squeeze and zip my my journey and my story in the in three minutes. So I, I started off my entrepreneurial journey when I was 22 years old. I graduated as student of the year and won at one most innovative business plan competition, where I got a small grant to start my business. Uh, previously, I, I hadn't had working experience, and I just did internships during studies. So uh, my company was my first official employment, actually. Uh, I launched the Grouper. It was the name of, uh, is still the name of the company. It's the leading e-commerce platform in North Macedonia that we launched in 2011 when basically e-commerce was not existent. People did not use payment cards. There were no habits, no supply, no demand in this in this area, and especially very low digital skills and low uh, IT literacy. So basically, we had to educate the market in order to create the market. So on, on paper, if uh, we took a look at the business plan, there was the timing was not right. That's why many of my friends were skeptical. But somehow we were enthusiastic and passionate that we are going to change e-commerce. And uh, our work was getting recognized only a year or two after we established the company. So we were recognized as the game changer of e-commerce in North Macedonia. I traveled a lot. I was speaking at lots of conferences, uh, sharing our story and how we succeeded in doing this um, and uh, over the course of the next 10 years since launching the company I've been active in, di in the digital economy in e-commerce I've been speaking uh, and working as consultant in many uh, many different countries uh, and I also co-founded the first Macedonian e-commerce association in 2017 you know striving to to make a bigger change and to represent the voice of the e-commerce in North Macedonia so my path took an interesting turn uh, in uh, 2019 when I was invited to join the government as Minister of Finance. I've never been active previously, let's say politically. I've never been a party of any, a member of any party. Uh, but this was like the huge recognition challenge and a huge responsibility I was given that I had to make the decision if I'm going to take that road or not. Uh, and. Um, on the topic of, of uh, women and gender, I was the first female uh, Minister of Finance in, in our country. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, from today's perspective, uh, of course, I didn't know that COVID would come and that it will make it much, much harder to navigate and have the public finances during the biggest crisis of all times. Uh, but I think that this is actually what matters, what makes us more stronger, knowledgeable to 
learned to swim in the sea of sharks, let's say. And um, uh, I, I, I was heading uh, the Ministry of Finance for one year, uh, and then we had uh, uh, there were elections, and I was uh, I was happy, let's say, to have seen the experience from the private sector, the NGO, and the government sector, but happy to be back in the private sector now where the magic happens uh, is what I, what I like to say, but the government is in a great deal responsible for enabling the environment for that magic to happen. When we're speaking also about gender equality, that the government can play a huge role. That's, I guess, what we're going to discuss next about what can we all do from all perspectives. Uh, and so um, in, on, the, on the topic of words, I'm at the moment on the board of directors of Makedonsky Telecom, uh, which is a group of Deutsche Telekom. I've been in the board for, uh, in the European E-Commerce Association for two years before joining the ministry. I've been also in the board of the Macedonian uh, E-Commerce uh, e Economic Chamber. Uh, and most of these tables where I've said I was either only the only one or maybe like two to three of us in a pool of 10 people, 15 maybe. And I think that um, this drive, let's say, why I'm on the panel and this passion towards contributing to, to gender equality is that um, when I was running the business, I never thought about that I'm ahead or behind the starting line just because I'm a woman. I was more worried when I was 22 years old and developing the business that it's because I'm too young how these men and people will perceive me. And I think that the, the key is that I was always prepared. I was always uh, trying to get all the data so that I'm the most, let's say, informed about the topic where I go. And this gave me self-confidence, I, I think. So I think that knowledge gives and boosts self-confidence, definitely. Um, but uh, however, I agree with Manuela, and I think that uh, we lack uh, more ambitious in women because when roles are presented as powerful or seeking for more responsibility, they are more appealing to men. And this is what studies have shown. So uh, I think that we have a long way to go. We did some progress in gender equality and the Sustainable Development Goal 5. Uh, but if we take a look at the statements from a few years ago by the UN, they said 2021 would be the year of gender equality and women. However, we are 20 years and I think that we made just incremental steps. Mm -hmm. If we are still discussing about a female leader, female arrows, uh, they're putting as the fem first female minister of finance, we are very, I think, uh, still behind. And we, do, we need to accelerate this. And the digital economy is a, in a great deal, I think, uh, a, a better place to foster and to speed up uh, the path towards uh, equality. So I will stop for now and uh, hope I can uh, contribute more during the discussion. Thank you, Nina. Thanks very much. And so it's it's interesting um, all of the different thoughts that are coming out from from this um, unfortunately all female panel, but nevertheless extremely diverse. And because we've got different uh, we've got different a broad range of age groups, we're coming from different locations, certainly different cultural backgrounds, um, and you know different situations. We've got representative of um, the public sector, government, um, you know, um, listed listed company boards, entrepreneurs, uh, people, you know, on advisory boards of startups, people very much involved in, in, in startups, investing in startups, and also NGO. And so it's across the board, and this group hasn't met before, and uh, we had a bit of discussion beforehand, and we have, even though we're quite diverse in, in, in where we're from, we all have um, rather similar ideas, which is quite interesting. And so I've got a question, and I'll start with Louisa. Um, what, what creates high-performing boards? Louisa, you're on uh, the, the boards of several listed companies. What are the leadership qualities required? And what has gender to do with this? It's a very interesting question. And um, indeed, based on the several boards that I sit on, empirically, I have come to the conclusion that what makes a good board is a depth of maturity and wisdom that needs to be shared. 
And there it's not about, uh, you know, difference. There it's about that commonality that um, uh, board members share coming from totally different places. And so it should be. Um, but sharing the skills that long-standing executive and life experience have brought and that um, make you want to go slower than when you are an exec, deeper than when you're an exec and broader than when you're an exec. And I think that makes a big difference on a really seasoned and effective board. That does not mean that you are not going to be decisive and, you know, all the stuff we know from the corporate executive careers, but there's an add-on and that add-on is the premium on a board, okay? I think the second thing on a board is that there is a combination of skills and subject matter expertises that really together make that one plus one plus one is more than three, i.e. the sum of the parts. Um, and that's interesting because that's also a pitfall for women. I see in some countries, and I've noticed this perhaps a bit in Switzerland more than elsewhere, that women then get drafted into boards uh, for a narrow, deep subject matter expertise and are stuck in that box, okay? And are they not really wanted or welcome to expand into the broader business strategy and connection and, and, and breadth, okay? Um, not on the boards I sit, but I have noticed this, including in selection processes, you know, that you go for something very functional, very narrow, very defined, and that's kind of it. And that is not a board. You are supposed to bring subject matter and expertise, go deep, but you are at the same time uniquely there in order to make connections across areas and bring it together for a total business strategy or governance, supervision, or risk, or whatever the aspect is. I think number three, a board is also a board who has a brilliant chair and has a chair who is both a brilliant facilitator, thought leader, but also steps away and lets his board or her board um, work. And at the same time, is a master of governance if we're talking a listed company and a role model who truly understands. And there, I must say, the UK governance context is, I think, a privilege to be part of as far as I'm concerned and also excels in really questioning and continuing to evolve the thinking on what good governance is as society evolves as business learnings evolve and as business evolves, including the digital economy, um, as an example. But I think this being a step ahead in the game of what good governance is as a role model, as a chair, and of course, all that directors, I think gives to a board a certain depth and respectability and impact that is different from a and I also sit on advisory boards where, you know, the subject matter expertise and the speed and the, uh, is different and is great. But a board, particularly of a very impactful senior listed company, needs to bring something extra. And, and again, I insist on the wisdom uh, which as a board, you know, you should bring to the party in different ways from the executives to bring value. And what women have to do with this, it's interesting, you know, women as diversity, not only women, but also women, of course, in a board, add on to that wisdom, because wisdom is the collection of different views, different angles that uh, precisely a mono uh, focused board or mono uh, cultural uh, board would not bring. And as such, it is crucial to have women. And I sit on boards where women are not a topic because we're there. We've always been. I've been on many boards of first women, but I'm not the only one anymore. Um, and uh, I think you can see different. Now, if the women are all the same and, you know, we had a board with same women, it wouldn't add anything either. Here, the point is not women or not women. It's the difference and the difference as a plus and gender difference as a plus. Very nice. Manuela, do you have something to, to add to that? 
Yeah. Um, first of all, that was very inspiring and, and very yeah. true. And I relate to a lot of what you said. So um, thank you. I, I think, you know, what, what you said about um, uh, what, what does it what do we really bring, actually? Uh, what are the leadership uh, skills required? I mean, there is a lot of uh, there is hundreds of studies on gender and leadership. And actually, most of, that, of them had found that at individual level, men and women are very close on most aspects when it comes to leadership potential. And there is no significant significant difference for intelligence or learning ability, but also general leadership. However, uh, we know by now there is a female advantage, and this has been studied and assessed, uh, I have a call, um, when it comes to transformational leadership, which is key these days. It's, it's, it's a style that is linked to higher levels of team engagement, uh, morale, productivity, and, and also um, I think women are often scoring, be- scoring better when it comes to rewarding individuals and their performance. Um, by contrast, men tend to lead in a more, you know, um, more autocratically and, and are a little bit more, uh, generalizing, but let's say fair leaders, which is a counterproductive, uh, leadership style. Women often tend to have higher emotional intelligence, uh, which is linked to better performance too, and, and, and lower levels of aggression. And, and it's a pattern that altogether is also associated with, uh, with superior leadership capability. And why do we need a gender balanced board or a more diverse board, uh, boards uh, we, we said in a lot of it but uh, beyond the, the fairness we also know that increased gender diversity brings a strong competitive advantage to modern companies and which especially these days uh, face an extraordinary competition an economy that that is putting a lot of attention and premium on knowledge and competence over confidence so women comprise you know more than half actually 51 percent of the pool of, of human capital and companies that fail to fully leverage and draw from from this pool are losing an edge and um and also often having more diverse boards and, and more females and women um, helps the firms and the company connect better with their stakeholders, whether it's customers, employees, owners, communities in which they operate. Um, if they have greater diversity, that is reflected in the market that they operate in. And with regards to research and data, there is a lot. There is McKinsey, there is recently, there is Credit Suisse, at least they all document that companies with gender diverse board actually experience higher return on equity. Uh, returns on sales and higher returns also on invested capital. So uh, what does a high-performing board do? They generate and implement, which is also a big difference here, fresh and very inclusive ideas. And if there is gender imbalance, um, as as we already said, most boards fall into what is called uh, this group think, and they uh, and they 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 fail to to see different perspectives, which may and will enhance company performance. So great ideas, but also great solutions arise when there is a, an active board and diverse board present at the table. Very interesting. Very nice. Thank you, both of you. And I'm um, I'm interested to know. If women are drivers of higher performance um, due to their skills and abilities, why aren't there more women on boards? What is holding us back? Are we holding ourselves back? And I'm um, I'm going to go to San Francisco and Anita. What are you thinking, Anita? Um, I don't know if if women are necessarily holding themselves back. I, th- I think it's the the uh, the reverse. I think it's you know the norm that's that's holding them back. I love that um, you know I talked to a good friend of mine who's on several boards, including Reddit and some other companies you might know um, today. And you know she would like to think of herself as somebody that is on a board, not necessarily a woman who's on a board, but she happens to be a woman. But yes, this is, you know, and I'm seeing that now a lot of women out there on LinkedIn saying, you know, why do I have to be known as the first woman to take a company public or whatever, right? Like, isn't it, you know, and, and should we, should we, you know, kind of label it that way? But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, in general, I think, yes, women probably, um, you know, tend to um, not make, you know, make, make their, sorry, it's hard for me to think at midnight. <laughs> you know, they, they, they don't prop themselves up as much as men do. Right. And they tend to downplay their skills. And I'm sure this friend of mine who was asked to join Reddit's board in a million years, never thought to, you know, actively pursue something like that. Right. And, and then the mandate came around and, 
you know, for better or for worse, I think that's really changed the game, especially in um, around here. So, um, yeah, and we have a, you know, there's a number of groups around here specifically set up to ha get women to join boards. You know, one is called All Raise, which is um, all made up of all female VCs and, um, there's another one, I forgot the name of it, where they, they just are specifically helping people, people, I should say, get on boards, but there is one specific to help more women, you know, join boards. And that might be because some of us are reluctant to raise our hand. That's interesting perspective. And Ayumi, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I, I believe that there's so many different things that are holding women back from the boards, but I do believe that um, one of the main ones are ourselves. I think that we have, uh, we put ourselves at the glass ceiling, we all talk about it, and we said it's always society, culture, government, everyone's putting the glass ceiling, but I think ourselves, I have put so many glass ceilings on top of me as well. We think oh, I'm not going to be good enough, am I ready, I'm not feeling legitimate. Because we grow up knowing or learning that women and girls should be perfect, right? So until we don't get that perfection, we're not ready yet. We said, okay, I have, I should get be able to you know get be more ready. So I have to learn more, I have to do this more, have more experience, have more something that when I'm there, I'm gonna be good. Men, they don't pose themselves these questions, you know. Most of them said, yeah, I'm good enough, and I'll learn there. So I think um, even when you see from, you know, in all levels of, of recruitment, you know, when there is a, a CV or a job offer, um, if a man has 55% or half of the comp of the technical skills, they said, this job is for me. I am the perfect candidate. And a woman is 95 to 100%. And I think this carries on all the way through, you know, when we reach the board level. We say, okay, I'm not the perfect person yet, you know, I'm not good enough. And I think we have to stop telling ourselves that and say, okay, I'm going to go for it, you know. And we will never be perfect for anything, I think. You know, perfection doesn't exist because we will always, always fail. That's the only thing that's sure. So I think we might as well fail while we're on the top and then just show the way and, you know, and create resilience in that way. Um, and I think role models, we also have to show people that we're not always perfect, you know. Role models have to show that all our imperfections makes who we are. And it's going to be much easier to be able to say, okay, I can also be like that, you know. Um, so I think role models and, and boards, you know, and women, we put ourselves extra pressure than anyone else because we want to be the perfect mothers, the perfect everything. And we can't always be, be there's no perfection, right? What is perfection? <laughs> so um, I think we, we hold ourselves... Um, a part of it is in our heads, definitely. And Nina, what are your thoughts about this? And also, what are your thoughts about quotas, pros and cons, and which way do you lean on, on this point? Um, first of all, I, I would say I couldn't agree more with what has been said so far in terms of what women bring to the board, what is a high-performing board, the, uh, the importance of role models and showing their raw uh, side rather than than perfection uh, and on the I would like to maybe add on the topic of uh, are we holding ourselves back I think that it's in a great deal yes we are in a great deal there is as Anita mentioned uh, the society the, the stereotypes I wish we could have a magical pill to kill all the all the or a vaccine you know to to try to solve the the prejudice and the stereotypes that they are there are for many many years um, but we, we don't, so that's why it makes it even more interesting to solve a challenge and a problem. And I think that the glass ceiling in a great deal is there because of the, our history, because of many things, because of biology. Um, but I, I think that we um, women need to work much more, need to prove themselves much more in order to get in a position where a man can is, get, get much easily. Uh, like Anita's friend, my path, for instance, I've never had ambitions, not not even speaking for a minister of finance, but I never thought that I would be where I where I am over the years. Somehow everything was coming naturally just because I loved what I was doing. I loved solving the problems. I was committed, dedicated. I did my PhD when I was 27. I was selected as Forbes 30 under 30 um, mm -hmm. right before turning 30, actually. And I was like, do I... Like Ayumi said, uh, do I deserve this? There are only like a 30 people on the list. Is it because maybe of quotas because they wanted to include a woman, a woman from the Balkans? And this is, I think, a, a good, uh, a good uh, triad or, or a virtue to be modest in many cases, but not for all. When we are speaking about 
uh, leading roles, either that be boards or other high uh, positions, then we need the ambitions of women. And uh, when I was writing for Forbes, there was a, a, an article, I was just searching to, it to, to find the title, it said, female leadership, be competent like a woman and confident and ambitious like a man. Because as Manuela said, all this, I, I believe she was uh, citing the Harvard study of uh, competencies and uh, measuring leadership of uh, capabilities and competencies of uh, men and women. And uh, it's interesting, sorry, that men, that, uh, that women outperform men in many of these competencies. Yeah, so it's not the stereotype that women take care and may, men take charge, but actually it broke the stereotype because women also prove better in driving for results in taking initiatives, uh, and on the other hand, also on emotional intelligence and caring and motivating people, which is crucial. So um, on on this, I, I, I think uh, on, on the topic of needing quotas or needing these role models, if you asked me a few years ago, I would have said probably, uh, no, somebody should not get in just because she's a woman. Uh, but today, after uh, having uh, been able to experience the sexism and the discrimination from the government point of view, being in politics, that are like, like it's like black and white, definitely. And uh, I definitely think that we do need quotas, we do need role models, we do need programs, we need everything that we can do. If it doesn't work, let's try it. It's better to try it than not to try it. Uh, and uh, there is there is actually this program that uh, that fosters uh, gender equality in the digital economy that I am part of. It's a uh, UN program on the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development that's called Eat Trade for All. Uh, and there is a sub initiative Eat Trade for Women where I'm advocate for for the for this region. There are six of us and we are very diverse. Somebody's coming from uh, South Africa. Somebody's coming from uh, Latin America. So we are pretty diverse group of women, but we all have similarities in, uh, in how our, we have experienced our, uh, our journeys. And being able to encourage somebody to be more ambitious, to, to return back to the topic, are we holding ourselves back? I think that a great deal is how kids are raised, how girls are raised. So uh, we need to start from, uh, you know, from the very beginning. And then is the educational system and uh, we all need to care, not only women, but it's sort of all for all. Uh, so we need to raise, raise awareness about what diversity means, not only about what women have to be in the board means, but what diversity brings and means uh, to, to the performance of, of uh, companies, because that's the interest of companies now where we're speaking about boards. Uh, and I think that we still, as I said, have a long way to go. Uh, but um, from today's perspective, yes, I think we need quotas. Uh, and as, as we talked yesterday, Lisa, it's not about, you know, uh, getting the position just because you're a woman, but rather uh, not getting the position because you're a woman. That's a very different, uh, you know, the same words when you put it differently. I think that's why we need quotas. We need role models. We need raising awareness. We need everything think from a holistic point of view on a global global scale that that we can do even each and every one of us and I'm trying to, to transfer this message when I'm speaking at events that we should all believe that we can all make a change regardless from which position it's powerful less powerful on the ground wherever only by sharing something or giving something to somebody like either advice or knowledge or exchange or motivating somebody can make a difference and um, I think we should all take small steps, governments maybe bigger steps, uh, so that we advance uh, with much faster speed. Very nice. So, yes, I do, I do often say I'd rather get the job because I'm a woman than to not get the job because I'm a woman. So thank, thanks for that, Nina. Um, women, so do, I'm just, we're, we're nearing the end. It goes so quickly, I can't believe it. Is it fair to say that we that we've had a, a nice uh, conversation. Um, do we agree that women have necessary competencies to drive performance? And I think that's, I think Manuela produced some statistics that show that, that performance is proven when there are women in positions of power, including specifically in boards. I think we, we have enough evidence of that. 
Leadership competencies, including empathy, are required at the board level from men and women. And in order to get there, <laughs> in lieu of change in mindset, we need to set policy, including potentially quotas. Do we agree on that last statement? So, so thoughts, who would, who would like to speak now? Um, I do agree. Uh, I have, though, an additional point. Mm -hmm. I think board work and board leadership contribution requires certain skills which need to be learned.